Hello everyone. In this video, I will start talking about a new chapter, wood. Wood is used in a lot of contemporary architecture. For example, this is the Swatch and Omega campus in Switzerland. It uses a lot of wood elements. It's designed by a Japanese architect. This is T3 Bayside in Toronto. It's the tallest timber office tower in North America. This is another view. This is the Halt, which is the Netherlands' tallest wooden residential building. This YouTube video summarizes um, the advantages of using wood um, as construction material. Um, wood is a biological material. Um, it's the oldest structural material. It's actually cheaper than other structural materials. And it's very strong, but yet lightweight. But there are concerns about using wood as construction material. For example, uh, fire, decay, and biological attacks from fungi, bacteria, and insects. The characteristics of wood are very complex. This is because we have many different species of trees, um, actually uh, more than 30,000 in total. And wood has a lot of flaws or imperfections caused by um, natural growth, uh, wood disease, animal parasites, too rapid seasoning, or faulty processing. And they can affect its appearance, its mechanical properties, or both. Also, um, wood is not an uh, isotropic material. It's anisotropic. More specifically, it's orthotropic. We will talk about this in greater details later. You need to um, know the difference between wood and timber. Wood refers to the organic matter obtained from trees, and timber is a type of wood that has been processed into beams and planks, a stage in the process uh, in the process of wood production. It's mainly used for structural purpose, but has many other uses as well. Trees are classified as either endogenous trees or exogenous trees based on the type of growth. Endogenous trees, such as palm trees, grow with intertwined fibers. Wood from endogenous trees is now generally used for engineering applications in the United States. Exogenous trees grow from the center out by adding concentric layers of wood around the central core. And in this class, we only consider exogenous trees. Exogenous trees are broadly classified as deciduous trees and conifers. Deciduous trees um, is a tree whose leaves fall off every year either due to winter cold or a dry season. Actually, deciduous means to fall off. Conifers are also called evergreen trees. Evergreen tree is a tree that, although it does lose its leaves and needles throughout the year, it's constantly growing new leaves and needles, and so it remains green year-round. In most cases, conifers have needle-like leaves, for example, a pine or hemlock. Deciduous trees um, have broad leaves, for example, oak, maple, ash, or walnut. Deciduous trees and conifers um, produce hardwoods and softwoods, respectively. The terms hardwood and softwood are classifications within the tree family, and it's not a description of the wood's characteristics. So the terms soft and hard do not refer to uh, the actual hardness of the wood. In general, soft woods are softer, less dense, and easier to cut than hard wood. Hard wood normally has a more complicated cell structure than soft wood. However, exceptions exist, such as balsa. It's a very soft and lightweight wood, but it's classified as hardwood. 
This figure shows two examples. Um, the tree on the left is a red oak. You can see it has broad leaves and is classified as deciduous trees, so it produces hardwood. And the tree on the right um, is a pine. Uh, you can see it has needle-like leaves. Uh, it's classified as conifer, so it produces soft wood. We all know that the concentric layers in the stem of the trees are called growth rings or annual rings. You may have counted the rings to estimate how old the tree is. However, not all the trees have growth rings. It's only the trees that grow in temperate zones. Those areas of the world that have distinct winters and summers that have individual growth rings. Trees that grow in tropical areas that have a constant growing season, um, the trees don't have distinct growth rings. The wood produced in one growing season constitutes a single growth ring. Each annual ring is composed of early wood produced by rapid growth during the spring, um, which is a high water time, and late wood from summer growth during the low water time. It's this pattern of early wood and late wood that makes the tree's growth rings very visible to us. Late wood consists of dense, dark, and thick-walled cells producing a stronger structure than early wood. The tree stem includes bark, cambium, wood, and the pith. The bark is the exterior covering um, of the tree. It has an outer layer and an inner layer. The outer layer is dead and quirky and has great variability in thickness depending on the species and the age of the tree. The inner layer um, is the growth layer for the bark, but um, it's not part of the wood section of the tree. The cambium is a very thin layer of cells located between the wood and the bark. It's the location of all wood growth. The, the pace is the central core of the tree. Its size varies with the tree species, ranging from barely distinguishable to large and conspicuous. The color ranges from black to white, and the pace structure can be solid, porous, or hollow, depending on the tree species. And the wood section of the tree is composed of sapwood and the heartwood. The dark part um, of the um, wood section is the heartwood. The darker area or around the center is the heartwood. And the lighter ring is the sapwood. Um, the dark part um, uh, which is the hardwood, uh, is not a living part of the tree. The cells are dead, and it only provides structural strength to the tree. And the sapwood has um, the living cells. The dark part used to be sapwood. Uh, it used to be living cells, but as the tree grows, these cells die, and they are there uh, primarily to support the tree. It's just the lighter edge, um, the, the sapwood, which is the, the lighter ring on the outside of the hardwood, right underneath the bark. They transport all of the water and all of the nutrients from the roots throughout the rest of the tree. So the sapwood is very important. It functions as a storehouse for starches and as a pipeline to transport sap.